So before we looked at indifference curves, and we saw just how exactly they would be represented on a graph, we saw what exactly the definition of indifference curve was, and what kinds of properties indifference curves would have. But knowing that is not enough. You might find yourself on the exam, and this is going to be a multiple choice question, where they're going to ask you, is this curve here going to be an indifference curve? And you're going to have to be able to say something about whether it satisfies these properties or not. So why exactly do we have definition one, or property one? That's to say, indifference curves are negatively sloped. Well, what I've given you here is a counterexample. So in this indifference curve, we can see here that it's actually positively sloped for all of this area here. So that's to say, everywhere along this line, we're going to get a utility value of 100. So that's to say, if we had one unit of good x and one unit of good y, that's going to give us a value of 100. But if we were also have, say, 10 units of good y and 10 units of good x, that's also going to give us a value of 100. And we're going to notice here that that trend just goes off onto infinity. We're never going to have any more or any less than a utility value of 100, regardless of how much or how many units of good x and good y that we have. So what that means is, the more goods we have is not going to make us any happier. And that doesn't really make any sense. Because we assume in economics that the more you have, the better off you are. We always wish we had more of the goods uh, available to us. Now, in your course, if you're going into a little more technical detail, that's to say it violates non-satiation. So that's to say, if this is the case, then we're going to have a situation where you're never really satisfied. You can never, uh, you can never have enough of it, any particular good. Now what that also means is there's not going to be any curling back here of the indifference curves. So notice here along this point, we've got a negatively sloping indifference curve, but here it's going to be positively sloping again. So in both of these graphs, we've got curves here that are simply wrong. So if you see this on a multiple choice exam, you're going to be able to know just why exactly these do not represent anyone's indifference or anyone's preferences.